This week, we focus on four of the ornate floor tiles in our sanctuary. They are dedicated to the gospel evangelists. Originally, these images flanked a dark brown pathway to the main altar situated on a raised platform against the back wall. On the left foreground is the image of Matthew. Approaching closer to the original altar is the image of Mark. On the right foreground is the image of John. Approaching closer to the original altar is the image of Luke. For a description of the images portraying the four evangelists in Christian art, go to the link that accompanies this video. The link includes descriptions from St. Irenaeus that are faithfully represented in the floor tiles in our sanctuary. Irenaeus wrote that St. Matthew is represented by a divine man because the Gospel highlights Jesus' entry into this world first by presenting his family lineage, a family record of Jesus Christ, son of David, son of Abraham, and his incarnation and birth. Now this is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. According to St. Irenaeus, Matthew's is the Gospel of his humanity, for which reason it is too that the character of a humble and meek man is kept up through the whole gospel. For St. Irenaeus, St. Mark, represented by the winged lion, references the prophet Isaiah when he begins his gospel. Here begins the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. In Isaiah the prophet it is written, I send my messenger before you to prepare your way, a herald's voice in the desert, crying, Make ready the way of the Lord, clear him a straight path. The voice in the desert crying reminds one of a lion's roar, and the prophetical spirit descending to earth reminds one of a winged message. The lion also signifies royalty, an appropriate symbol for the Son of God. Irenaeus taught that the winged ox represents St. Luke. Oxen were used in temple sacrifices. For instance, when the Ark of the Covenant was brought to Jerusalem, an ox and a fatling were sacrificed every six steps. St. Luke begins his gospel with the announcement of the birth of St. John the Baptizer to his father, the priest, Zechariah, who was offering sacrifice in the temple. St. Luke also includes the parable of the prodigal son, in which the fatted calf is slaughtered, not only to celebrate the younger son's return, but also to foreshadow the joy we must have in receiving reconciliation to our most merciful Savior, who as priest offered himself in sacrifice to forgive our sins. Therefore, the winged ox reminds us of the priestly character of our Lord and his sacrifice for our redemption. Lastly, Irenaeus describes St. John. He is represented by the rising eagle. The gospel begins with the lofty prologue and rises to pierce most deeply the mysteries of God, the relationship between the Father and the Son, and the Incarnation. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning. Through Him all things came into being, and apart from Him nothing came to be. And the Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of an only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. The Gospel of St. John, unlike the other Gospels, engages the reader with the most profound teachings of our Lord, such as the long discourses that Jesus has with Nicodemus and the Samaritan woman, and the beautiful teachings on the bread of life and the Good Shepherd. Jesus, too, identified himself as the way, the truth, and the life, 
and anyone who embraces him as such will rise to everlasting life with him. St. Irenaeus goes on to conclude, while each of these symbols focuses on the particular theme of each gospel, only in penetrating all four gospels do we encounter fully our Lord. George Whelan offers this reflection on the four evangelists. The four evangelists, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, are known for their spreading of the good news about Jesus by writing the four Gospels. They are models for us to live our lives by, witnessing the message of Jesus to all. Just think of the lasting power of their writings since the time of Jesus. That thought about the lasting power is both humbling and inspiring. Let us ask Mary's help to be worthy evangelists in service to Jesus. We pray, Mary, we are inspired by Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, whose messages have affected us so powerfully since the time of your son, Jesus. Please help us to live our lives as evangelists by witnessing to everyone that we meet. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In our next reflection, we will focus on the large central painting of the Immaculate Conception. Thank you, dear friends, for your patronage and especially for your devotion to Mary. May you always remain close to our Blessed Lady. O Mary, conceived without sin, pray for us who have recourse to you. <laughs> 